The upcoming iPhone SE4, or as some reports suggest, the iPhone 60e is generating a lot of buzz. But while it promises to be a modern revamp of the iPhone SE lineup, it comes with a significant change that might not sit well with everyone. This new model will feature an in-house cellular modem chip designed by Apple, marking a departure from the Qualcomm modems that have been a staple in iPhones for years. While this shift could save Apple money, it might also result in worse cellular coverage for users. According to a new report from Korea, Apple's own motive is expected to underperform compared to the Qualcomm chips we've grown accustomed to. These Qualcomm modems are known for their reliability and strong performance, which is why Apple has continued to use them in its flagship iPhone 16 series. The company didn't want to risk degraded cellular performance on its premium devices, so it decided to test its in-house modem on a more budget-friendly iPhone SE 4 instead. This means that potential buyers of the SE 4 could experience weaker signal strength and slower data speeds compared to what they might be used to with their current iPhones. Despite this potential drawback, the iPhone SE 4 has managed to generate more excitement than the iPhone 16 did last year. For many, it represents an affordable entry point into the modern iOS experience without the hefty price tag of Apple's premium models. The iPhone SE 4 offers a sleek design, support for Apple intelligence, and a user experience that's nearly on par with its more expensive counterparts. The only notable sacrifices are in camera quality and storage, which are compromises many are willing to make for a more budget-friendly device. Renowned analyst Ming-Chi Kuo predicts that the iPhone SE 4 will sell exceptionally well, thanks to the significant improvements it brings over its outdated predecessor. This means that a lot of people are likely to upgrade from their older flagship iPhones to the SE 4. However, these users might be in for a rude awakening when it comes to cellular performance. While the SE 4 offers a lot of value for its price, the switch to Apple's in-house modem could result in a noticeable drop in coverage quality. So why is Apple making the shift? The answer is simple, cost savings. By designing its own cellular modems, Apple can avoid paying licensing fees to Qualcomm, which would significantly reduce manufacturing costs. Additionally, using its own modems allows Apple to better optimize the synergy between its hardware and software, much like it has done with its Apple Silicon chips. This move aligns with Apple's long-term strategy of bringing more of its technology in-house, giving the company greater control over its products and reducing its reliance on third-party suppliers. However, Apple's journey into modem design hasn't been without its challenges. While the chip that will be used in the iPhone SE 4 is a functional product, it's still an inferior substitute compared to Qualcomm's offerings. Apple has faced numerous hurdles in developing its own modems, and this first iteration is likely to have its fair share of kinks that need to be worked out. That said, it's reasonable to believe that Apple will eventually perfect its modem technology. In fact, we might even see an improved version of this chip debut in the iPhone 17 lineup. Can you believe it has been three years since Apple introduced the Dynamic Island? While the feature was a big step forward when it debuted, it has remained unchanged since the iPhone 14 Pro. But that is about to change with the iPhone 17 Pro Max. Apple is planning a major front design upgrade, and for the first time in years, the iPhone's display will look different. According to well-known leaker digital chat station, the iPhone 17 Pro Max will introduce an advanced meta lens technology. This will allow Apple to shrink the dynamic island, making it smaller and more compact than ever before. Since 2022, the front of the iPhone has stayed the same, but the introduction of meta lens could be a game changer. So what exactly is meta lens? Unlike the traditional curved lenses used in current iPhones, meta lens is an ultra-thin optical lens that uses nanostructures to control light. Because it is flat and lightweight, it takes up less space, allowing Apple to reduce the size of the dynamic island. The company plans to integrate key face ID components into this meta lens system, making the entire structure thinner and more efficient. This change is not just for the iPhone. Digital Chat Station also suggests that meta lens technology will be applied to upcoming iPad Pro models, including a potential foldable version. This means we could soon see thinner, more compact designs across Apple's entire lineup. However, Apple's ultimate goal is even bigger. The company wants to place the entire Face ID system behind the screen, eliminating the need for a visible dynamic island. While this technology is still several years away, the iPhone 17 Pro Max marks the beginning of that transition. Aside from the redesigned front, Apple is also considering other major design changes for the iPhone 17 Pro. Recent leaks suggest that the phone may feature slimmer bezels, making the display even more immersive. Additionally, Apple is rumored to be experimenting with sloping edges, aluminum side rails, and back design that combines aluminum and glass. These changes are part of Apple's strategy to make the iPhone feel fresh and exciting again. 
The iPhone 16, despite being one of the best smartphones available, did not bring significant innovations. Apple seems determined to change that with the iPhone 17 lineup, but the upgrades do not stop at the design. The iPhone 17 Pro is also expected to feature a 48 megapixel periscope camera, offering improved zoom capabilities. On the front, Apple may introduce a 48 megapixel camera, which could significantly enhance selfie quality and video calls. In addition to the Pro models, Apple is planning to shake up its entire iPhone lineup. Rumors suggest that the company will introduce a new model called the iPhone 17 Air. This device is expected to replace the Plus model and compete directly with Samsung's upcoming Galaxy S25 Edge. Under the hood, the iPhone 17 series will be powered by Apple's new and 19 chips built on an upgraded 3 nanometer process. This could lead to better performance and improved battery efficiency. Another major change is that the iPhone 17 Air might feature Apple's first in-house modem, reducing its reliance on third-party suppliers. With all these upgrades, Apple is aiming to make the iPhone 17 lineup the most exciting release in years. The company knows that customers expect innovation and they seem ready to deliver. What do you think about these changes? Will the iPhone 17 Pro Max live up to the hype? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more updates on the latest tech news. Have you ever wondered if faster processors in smartphones are really all they're cracked up to be? Sure, they sound great, but what happens when that speed starts making your phone uncomfortably hot to touch? In 2025, smartphones like the Samsung Galaxy S25 are pushing performance to new heights, boasting speeds that are a solid 40% faster than their predecessors. But here's the catch. They're also heating up quite a bit. And while the iPhone 16 doesn't run quite as hot as the previous iPhone 15, it's still got its fair share of overheating complaints. Apple's already thinking ahead with rumors swirling about a potential new cooling solution for the iPhone 17. High performance chips are no strangers to consuming a lot of power, which naturally leads to heat generation. But when a phone is so fast that it becomes too hot to handle, it makes you question if we truly reach the peak of smartphone performance. After all, what good is all that speed if you can't even use the device comfortably? Take the iPhone 15 Pro, for example. When overheating problems started to surface, there was talk that Apple might intentionally dial back the phone's performance to solve the issue. Although that didn't quite happen, many iPhone 15 and 16 users still find their devices getting uncomfortably warm. And then there's Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite chip. While it promises blazing speeds, it also has its own overheating issues. Performance often gets throttled, meaning the phone slows down to keep temperatures under control. The bottom line, if your phone is too hot to hold or if the performance slows down to prevent overheating, then those blazing fast speeds aren't really delivering the experience you expected. What's more, overheating phones can actually damage internal components and reduce battery lifespan. So while companies rush to boost performance, users are left with phones that overheat, drain battery life faster, and may even be at risk of long-term damage. The solution, Innovation in cooling. The Galaxy S25 has improved its cooling system, boasting a 40% larger vapor chamber and tailored thermal interface material, TIM. But from the number of complaints online, it's clear that even this improvement isn't enough to keep the phone cool under heavy use. The pace of innovation in cooling technology has been slow, and with AI and other power-hungry technologies making things worse, smartphone makers need to move away from relying on passive cooling systems. The rise in overheating complaints suggests that these current cooling solutions are quickly becoming outdated. So what's the next step for smartphones? Are they really all about performance now? For most people, smartphones have become rather predictable, fast, sleek, and with impressive cameras. But beyond that, what's really new? AI and foldable phones are trying to push boundaries, but they haven't quite found a solid reason for most people to care. Despite cheaper foldables hitting the market, they still haven't taken off in a big way. Smartphone companies are leaning on performance metrics to market their devices, but how many of us actually need faster speeds for everyday tasks? Smartphones are productivity powerhouses and they're definitely not gaming rigs. For most users, the speed boost doesn't add enough value to justify the heat, battery drain, and performance throttling that comes with it. 